All right, what's going on guys? It's Lucas here with Lonesome Dog Studios. And today I'm gonna to show you some tips on how to record and mix guitar in Logic Pro X. Let's get straight into it. The most important thing with recording guitar is the actual take. If you have a bad take, it's always gonna sound bad. It's hard to fix a bad take. For me, I would say it's like 70% take and 30% mix. You can only take a mix so far if you have a bad take. But if you have a good take, sometimes you don't even have to do that much mixing to it. It's already there. First things first, you want to record your guitar in and get a decent take. So I'll show you what I've got here with no effects on. This is what we've got straight into Logic. There's no problems with it. There's no buzz. There's no wrong notes. Everything sounds clean. You want that good fundamental. That's, that's the most important thing first. The next, really, the thing to do is go in, start with some subtractive EQ. So we're gonna jump on that, solo just this one. So we've taken out these lows here, so we're not getting any of unwanted low end that's gonna mask in the bass. And I've dipped about here, about 2K, and just at this top end, just to reduce the harshness of the guitar, really. So that's what this sounds like. With and without, we'll do it. About. get a little bit less of that low end clean up EQ basically that's what that that's what that's doing the next we want to add on a compressor and the reason for this so we've got our subtractive EQ and then a compressor we want to do that before we do our additive EQ because we don't want to have the subtractive EQ after the compressor so that the unwanted sounds are getting compressed and boosted you want to leave them so that they're gone before we're boosting anything so we've got our compressor in just a subtle bit of compression I've gone for this one on logic but you can use really any one you want. I've gone for about three, maybe you could boost it a little bit. Just maybe minus three, minus four decibels is the right amount. Be decisive on, depending on the mix, whether you want an overly compressed guitar or you want a very fluid dynamic range, you can do less compression. And yeah, just fiddle around with it. See, see what suits best. Maybe even you could add some, I haven't here, but you could add a little bit of distortion within your compressor, compressor just to toughen up the sound a little bit. Maybe even with some soft in there. Yeah, yeah, I don't mind that. Now you wanna go in now, and we're gonna go on to the additive EQ. So this is where we're boosting our sound. So we're, we're adding some body here at about 200 to 300 K Hertz, and a little kind of presence boost up here at two, put, two to three K. And that's just gonna help push the guitar to the top of the mix a little bit more and just help give it clarity, basically. So that's what that sounds like. It's already starting to sound. EQ, for me, EQ, you, you can save a mix with EQ. It's so powerful because you are able to place things within the mix where you want them. You're able to decide, yeah, I want this to sit here and this to sit here. And that's what we're doing here with the guitar. Now we're going to add some amp emulation. I've just gone for the Logic stock one using the Sunshine Combo Clean preset. Messed a little bit about with the, the levels. I haven't put any reverb or anything on, just a little bit of gain, a little bit of presence. Just It just gives you that feeling like you're playing it for an amp. That amp emulation, it gives it that real guitar feel. And next we're gonna go on, and I've got here some Abbey Road kind of like vinyl stuff. So we hear that now. I've gone in, just opened up a preset on here and messed about with it a bit, added some wow, a little bit of flutter just to give it that kind of, what I would call the lo-fi sound, giving a little bit of pitch movement as well, just to give it a little bit of extra, like extra tone, a little bit of character. Lastly, on this one here, we've got some saturation as well. So that's just taking away a bit of the harshness and just smoothing out the sound overall, really. Used subtly in the right way can really add that warmth to your guitar. It can add that real body and thickness that you want. You don't want that too thin sounding guitar. You want your guitar, I mean, depending on the mix, but you want your guitar to sound full bodied and strong and powerful. That's what saturation does. Got a bit more, a bit more bite to it now. And I've gone in as well with a little bit of space designer, just a bit of reverb, nice room. Yeah, yeah, that's just puts it in the space of the whole mix, really. That's our first guitar track. And what I've gone and done is duplicated that. So we've got one pan to the left and one pan to the right. That's going to give us more of a stereo image, really widen out that guitar sound. Here's that. And especially because we're using that flutter and wow, from the vinyl thing here, 
it's going to feel almost like a tremolo effect it's wobbling between the speakers really widening things out i think that's important another thing you can do here is parallel mixing so one one of the tracks is heavily affected and the second one is a bit drier adding an eq maybe not an amp but like slight bit of compression definitely less than last time use a different compressor as well so it's giving us that kind of it's giving us two different kind of tones that are going to blend together really widen out our guitar sound i think just compression and eq to be fair like that in combination with that if we balance them out a bit and obviously do this to taste when you're doing your your thing you've got that kind of wobbly pitch wobble sound yeah yeah and lastly what i've gone and done is i've track stacked them together so we've got a, the two guitar tracks we can mix together and i'm going to stick a compressor on here like a glue compressor so blending the two tracks together so that they're coherent and as one and that's and that's important in our mix we don't want nothing sticking out we want it to be coherent and, and glued and everything to feel like as if it's in the same space we hear that with the compressor on now you're not you're less so hearing two parts and they become emerged into one. And maybe even on this, you can then go in with effects. You can go delays, like maybe even like, yeah, delays like a slap back. So say we went into like stereo delay here, really brought down the mix to like 9%, 8%. Cut some of these up so we're only getting the top end. Bring the delay time so it's closer together. So we've got less so it's just a slight bounce and it gives the guitar especially with slapback delay i think it's important with guitar it gives it that bounciness and because we're using stereo delay again we're getting more width to our sound it's bouncing across you've got different rhythms on each side so there's there's some interplay there and just a bit more color within the mix And that's what that sounds like. So in, in context of the mix, here's what, here's what that sounds like without all the effects in the mix, and then I'm gonna play it with all the effects. So without, it sounds like this. So you can hear your, the blow ends are clashing. We don't want that. There's, there's, so, there's so much stuff that we fixed already. So if we take, if we try that now with all of our effects, you're going to hear that huge difference in terms of clarity, width, warmth. So here's what that sounds like. This is with all the effects. go guys that's that's been some guitar tips i hope they've been useful i've been lucas with lonesome dog studios please like and subscribe i'll see you next time